Hey guys, John here. I have a live video here, no editing being done with this one. This is just a straight shot. I have the new Smart Summon updates, the actually Smart Summon updates with 12.5.4.1 that just came in last night. And we're gonna take a look at the settings here to start. So really what's been added here, if we tap on the release notes, it's gonna open up. Now includes improved public high-speed road aborts includes improved blocked camera aborts. We have reduced false positive collision mitigation aborts. Now that's gonna be really nice. And refined dumb summon. And then added custom fart completion sounds. So I can tell you right off the bat that I don't know what the second item is related to. I did not have any blocked camera aborts. And then the fifth item, added custom fart completion sounds. My car does not have the uh, speaker unit built in, so I cannot test that, unfortunately, here today. But that has been added. If we jump into the settings here for Summon, you can see in the Autopilot menu, if I scroll down, there's a Customize Summon button. It's the same as it was before. You cannot enable the require or disable the require continuous press. And then it really comes down to the app. So inside of the app, you can see, first of all, I am on a very busy road. Let me just show you my camera. Well, I'm not on a busy road, but I have cars that are moving very quickly behind me. There, it's probably a 45 mile road. They call it a divided highway. This is Gulf Road. It's, it's quite busy, I would say. When I go to use the actually Smart Summon, I get this message. It says, uh, cannot use on public roads. Although I am clearly not on any public roads. In fact, you can see I'm in the middle of a parking lot. I'm right on the edge of some lines in this parking lot, uh, or at the far perimeter of the parking lot rather. So I should be able to use it within this parking lot, but obviously I cannot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to press this forward and just have the car move itself forward here. So hold it down, mm -hmm. the mirrors fold in, and we are moving forward. It's hard to see on this camera like what's happening. <laughs> it just it shows the front camera and it's saying release to stop. It's going about, it, the display here says it's going one mile per hour and that matches inside the car going one mile per hour. So let's say if, if I stop right here now, so I'm gonna let up on the button and the hazard lights go on immediately. Let's take a look at the rear camera. So we are now one row above where we were. So let's see now if we can use the target option. It says, cannot use on public roads. I'd say we are about a good 70 feet away from that road. We're not that close to it anymore. So really we should be able to use it from this parking space. So yet again, what I'm gonna do is, is run this again, and I'm gonna uh, fo go forward just a tiny bit more, and we're gonna see if we can then use it from the spot next to this one. So I'll go ahead and press on the forward button, and the car is gonna move forward. It seems to only have a one mile per hour speed. So now I'm crossing over this one, and I'm not parked straight in the spots, but I'm now lined up with a car on my right. So this is a, this is the next row over. So now let's take a look and see if we can use it. Now we can go to target. So if I were to get a measure stick out or something, I, I'd say we're about a good 100 feet away. If I now tell it to move, let's, let's say I take the target position and I'm gonna move it over to basically where that target, where that road is, like as if I'm gonna be going out onto that main road. And you're gonna see that it's gonna make a U-turn and then it's gonna shut itself off. So let's just do that test here real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and press down on the go to target button this time. Okay. And the car starts to move. And you're gonna see here, I wish you could see better on the, on the phone, you're gonna see a message get displayed. Let's see if I can share this with everybody. 
Here it's jerking forward. <laughs> Cannot use on public roads. So <laughs> there we have it again. Thankfully nobody in this parking lot, so I'm not too concerned, but yeah, that's a real bummer because let me just show you what's above here, what's straight forward here, is there's a lot of spaces. So there's a parking, a parking lot over here to the right, there's a parking lot over here to the left, and all these lines. So it's, it's like the perfect spot to park. And normally, you know, it's, it's very acceptable to take the car over into this area to, to park. So a little bit disappointing to me that it can't get into these areas. I thought this was what had been fixed, to be honest with you. So if, if I, let's just say I park right here, if I back up, say I'm parked in this spot right here. Let's just see if I can turn it on. Let's go back in. It says cannot use on public roads. So again, um, a little, little bit disappointing. I thought that would have been addressed. Let's take a look back into the release notes. Improved blocked camera aborts. If you guys have any suggestions on how to test that, let me know. I have no idea what, what that means. The next thing is reduced false positive collision mitigation aborts. We're gonna try to test that one. I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to. The next thing is the reduced false positive collision mitigation, mitigation aborts. So it's the second thing now that I'm gonna go test and see if we can get that to work. And again, I cannot turn it on anywhere over here to the right. And, and I have to go not in, into this lane right here, but the next one right here and then then I can turn it on so let's just confirm that parked box back in the same spot go back to here and it says go to target so now I'm able to select so let me place it place the pin on here I'm just gonna place it all the way over here and hit go to target okay here we go if there would have been anything that would have been the spot with that curb. It says we're just going straight forward a little bit here, a little bit longer. So it's going to pull over here and put on its hazard lights. Right there, we have arrived. Okay, and it's arriving here at this location I just told it to go to. So the hazard lights go, go on, car just went around me. I can now select another, I'll do one last one and then we'll call this a day. I'm gonna put it a little bit behind me, all the way over there. It's getting close to that public road again. So let's see if it can make its way over there. If I put it right up against the public road, like right here, for example, it would not be able to go there. So I'm purposefully going to place it somewhere right in here. Just see how it can get to that spot. Go to target. That way it won't get interrupted as it's moving. The turns feel a little bit more refined, a little bit smoother. I'm also not witnessing the same amount of interruptions due to poor connectivity. That seemed to happen quite a bit in the past. Like right there, it just slowed down. 
it's hard to see on camera but when it slows down like that usually it's because there's poor connectivity so I'm keeping a very close eye on my phone just to see what message it says it says right now release to stop so I if I were to let go it the car would stop I noticed that the it doesn't air out as quickly. Uh, previous versions, it would um, have a tendency to uh, want to collide into things or, as, well, curbs, and then it would freak out and then slam on the brakes. I didn't have that happen once. Usually, in 30 minutes of testing, which is approximately what I've done here, I would get that message. So that's a really positive sign to me. It means that it's a little bit more robust. It's less likely to stop midway. The preparing phase, that seems to have been addressed when you go to start it again it takes off right away. It doesn't hang up and try to connect for 12 seconds like it did previously. And 12 seconds is an eternity, by the way. <laughs> and that, that's what would end up happening. You have to wait for a very long time. That seems to have been fixed. Uh, and then lastly, it's this public roads thing, which got uh, introduced with 1254. 1253, which the majority of people did not have, that uh, had a lot more issues. So we've come a long way in a very short period of time. And for that, I'm very thankful and happy. So I think Tesla's done a great job with this. And it's a feature that I'm feeling a lot more confident in using on a, on a regular basis. And again, I used to use the regular Smart Summon on my ultrasonic car all the time. Uh, as long as this can be equivalent in functionality and practicality, then I will be using it. And it looks like we are about there now. It, it's a little bit slow, I will admit. Uh, six miles per hour is not as fast as full self-driving does, and I did a comparison taking the same route within the same parking lot around the same time, uh, comparing FSD to actually Smart Summon. You can see that video link up above, right there. I don't think these are major updates, and I'm a little bit disappointed on the, the, the road, the public roads thing, because that eliminates basically two parking rows in this entire parking lot. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later.